Hi everyone and welcome to an almost real-time painting video. I sped it up uh, two times, by two times or 200% uh, to make it a little bit faster uh, because otherwise the video would be <laughs> too long to uh, render from my uh, PC, from my computer. So um, yeah, it's now I think a bit more than 45 minutes long, which is still a bit long. But uh, yeah, I'm here to answer a few questions I ask you on Instagram and on Twitter if you have any questions. They mostly were art related, so um, if you if you don't like me talking in these kind of videos and if you prefer just music in the background, uh, please mute me and just listen to the music of your choice. Um, okay, so I'll be answering some questions now. The first one is from uh, Dana, 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 uh, on Twitter, uh, and she asks, "Do you ever draw in public? If yes, do you find it hard? If no, what are the reasons behind that?" I can actually answer that very quickly. <laughs> I don't. I have never really drawn in public. I think I don't really go outside. <laughs> I don't know. I know this is really weird, but. Um, I don't know, uh, I would feel very very awkward because I have like social anxieties and other kind of mental health problems um, and I would feel very very weird to draw in public even though I would love to do that, I would love to have like, um, I don't know, the confidence to, to do that because if I would do that I would feel like people would be watching me and I, I don't like that feeling so um, I don't really <laughs> draw in public but I really like it when people like post when they do something like nature or I don't know people in general um, that they saw and do in public so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm too awkward for that. Okay. Um. Next question are from Instagram. Um. Next one is from W Wild Pencil. Uh. Maybe talk about music that helps and inspires your work. If you listen to music, of course. Just a note. I uh, I ask if you have questions or if you have like themes you want me to talk about. So this was. A suggestion um, and yeah I usually listen to music when I sketch out something uh, that kind of helps me to get into the mood of a painting uh, while I paint I usually actually listen to either music or a podcast um, because when I already know what I want to paint uh, I I don't really need the music to help the mood but uh, sometimes I still need that if I don't really uh, figure it out what I want to draw. Um, and lately I've or usually I listen to a lot of soundtracks or piano music um, while painting or it depends on the theme uh, what I want to paint if I want to uh, do these portraits like these space people portraits uh, I usually listen to like piano music um, or game soundtracks I think those are pretty uh, good to listen to while drawing something because there's also not much uh, like singing involved. I think like uh, the moment there is singing involved, um, I tend to concentrate on the music more than on the ideas I want to create or I don't know. Um, and I feel like soundtrack music with just instruments uh, help more to uh, get into the ideas. Okay, so the next question is from Tidbit Factory. Uh, talk about painting techniques. Um, well, I don't really have painting techniques. Like, I just recently uh, used wet on wet technique when I paint um, skin colors usually but other than that I don't really use a technique that I'm aware of actually <laughs> I don't know um, 
maybe I use some techniques and I, I'm not really, I don't really know if I am doing that, but I do, don't really watch tutorials um, except for how to draw anatomy. That's the only thing where I feel like I need to have like tutorials to help me draw a human body. That's but how to use uh, paints or colors, not color theory, but just colors in general, how to use the paints that I bought. I don't really use tutorials um, or um, watched like how to paint in different techniques. That's not something because I, I didn't know that it was wet on wet technique. Um, <laughs> I just figured it out like recently and I don't know, I usually just uh, play around and figure it out on my own, which is probably not a good idea if you're just starting with something. But that's kind of just how I do it personally. Uh, there are people who love to watch tutorials and that's absolutely uh, fine and um, probably more efficient. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just weird. I, I don't really know any techniques. It's mostly just tips while I paint or while I draw that I kind of... Oh, this now helped me to get more efficient with this stuff. And uh, sometimes I write and write them down because I feel like sometimes I want to do like videos where I, when I kind of figured something out <laughs> for myself um, that I could share. But uh, it was never really a technique or something. Um, okay, next question uh, comes from Eliza uh, Yell or Lel. Uh, why are they always uh, thematic about a solar system and how do you create these characters? Um, I'm obsessed with space stuff like, I don't know, uh, galaxy. I've always been obsessed with that stuff and when I was a child I wanted to become an astronaut um, and I don't know, it, I find it very very calming like space images and planets and also Sailor Moon helped a lot with that like Hello, that was absolutely my thing because it was about planets and stuff, like they had their names from them. And I I had this idea of making these space people. It's not just planets, but it will also be moons that I like and I don't know, asteroids or comets or I don't know, um, stars as well, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I had this idea to make portraits of them. Uh, a while ago and I started I think with Callisto which I s want to repaint and after Callisto uh, because Callisto is my favorite moon probably uh, I know that most of the images are color corrected like they put the colors in them so it doesn't really look like that um, but it's still so pretty I really like this moon and um, I wanted to paint it, so I did that and I want to repaint it so badly because I don't like that painting anymore. Even though I like the colors, but uh, yeah, I don't like it anymore. And the sun uh, painting came after that and not this one that you're seeing right now, but it was a different sun painting. Um, and I wasn't happy with that as well, so that's why I repainted it. and. Um, I like this new sun painting more, even though there are a lot of things that, <laughs> that I don't like anymore, especially the nose. Ah, the nose, uh, I don't know, it, I, I, I can't draw noses, I don't know why. Um, I should probably train myself or practice more to paint noses, but it's something really weird. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make this new because uh, I wanted to add more fire elements and um, yeah, something like that. And yeah, <laughs> that's kind of how that happened. And uh, yeah, I'm obsessed with space stuff and uh, galaxies and uh, like the aesthetic of it. And it's also super interesting to me when there's yeah, like new planets that are. Um, that they find and stuff like that. I think it's really cool. Um, next question comes from Nin Ninsky, Ninsky, Ninsky Art. Uh, talk about your personal improvement and how you've gone about that. I feel like 
I don't know if it's just me personally, but I feel like in the last year I didn't improve much because I don't know, I feel like I improved uh, in getting more details in my in my paintings, but not really improving in certain things like getting better at painting. I feel when I see uh, when or when I watch my paintings that I did like in 2013, I see an improvement um, when it comes to generally like drawing faces, uh, but it's all practice. Like, I don't know um, if I don't paint for a long while uh, I feel like I don't know how to paint anymore <laughs> and I have to relearn it but uh, I relearn it faster than um, than to take another year to learn it again um, it's just getting into that mood again and and to like draw but I feel like I don't know, did I improve? I really don't know. I feel like I just changed some things that I'm interested in. Like lately, I really like to draw digitally um, and I haven't been painting uh, with watercolors a lot. Uh, not because I hate it or I, I don't. I gave up on it. That's not the case. I still want to paint with watercolors, but I just needed something totally different to um, feel motivated again because I was like feeling n no inspiration. I didn't know what to draw and um, or to paint with watercolors, and uh, I had no ideas and. I don't know, I needed something totally new, so I started with digital um, drawing and it helped me to draw something completely different and get into something completely different. And I'm sorry for the people who actually followed me because of watercolors and now they see all that digital crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, yeah, it's more personal also. And yeah, I don't know. I, it's an improvement, it's more like trying something new i guess um next question uh from hippie whale could you talk about how you get inspired and whether you plan uh, your artwork first or whether you just go for it i sometimes plan works like when i sketch out for example um the portraits i usually sketch them first on big sketching paper uh, that way I can get different ideas and see if that works um, instead of drawing it directly on the watercolor paper and uh, when I have like no idea what to do um, that helps like but sometimes um, I don't have any ideas and I just want to try something like having uh, when I see for example um, reference pictures or photos of of people and I think like this pose is really interesting or aesthetically pleasing <laughs> I don't know I try to um, draw a pose similar to that and I just go in with colors and try if it's if it works but um, yeah that sometimes happens but um, for the planets for the space people <laughs> I usually try to uh, plan them or plan the details of what what colors I could use and stuff like that. And if they feel like more like um, a planet with a lot of red colors or blue colors, I don't know. That's kind of the planning I do for uh, those. But it's mostly like trying out different things, I guess. Um, the next question comes from Kia Kanerva. Ka Kia? Ki Ki <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that uh, wrong. Um, tell us about your art journey. Like, when you, when did you start to draw? Have you always liked watercolors? Do you make a living with your art? Where do you get inspiration? Um, okay, so I started drawing when I was a kid. Like, <laughs> I've always been drawing and I. I think I answered this one in another video, I think. But yeah, I started when I was a kid. I always drew something and after a while I got into like um, anime and manga and I drew like that or tried to draw, draw like that. 
um, and after that I also got a very very short time into digital art and I was drawing with a tablet and then I stopped for I don't know how many years and after that I started with watercolors. I I saw a lot of artists that I liked um, back then using watercolors. So I thought that it's interesting. The effect is in in interesting. Like um, I want to try it out, and that's how I it kind of began with watercolors. Like um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, what was that? Uh, do you make a living with your art? It's kind of a part-time job for me. Like I uh, sometimes get like commissions, and uh, sometimes um, I have paintings that I want to sell. Um, and yeah, it's not really a full-time job. Like it's also YouTube is not a full-time job. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of okay with it right now because I feel like. Mm, I wouldn't be in a place where I could make this a full-time job um, mentally. <laughs> it's just something that I couldn't do as a full-time job right now because of uh, mental health and uh, I don't know other things but I'm okay with it being like a part-time job and I want to continue that because I would miss it if I didn't do it and um, I don't know if my mental health <laughs> gets better one day I might try to make it a full-time job but I don't know I, I can't tell for sure um, but it's still a part of my uh, my life and I couldn't give it up completely oh and where do you get inspiration um yeah everywhere <laughs> like I, I think I told this so many times like everything can be an in, in inspiration like lately it's been video games like so many video games so many good video games came out and it's so inspiring, like, um, I get especially inspired by the environment uh, lately, like, level design. Oh, I l really love it, like, for example, I I played, like, God of War, and the level design is amazing. I really like it, like, sometimes I just want to stand somewhere and just look around um, and paint something like this, and uh, I think that is something that kind of gets me very interested <laughs> like I would love to try and do something uh, similar to that next question comes from Gallard C or Gallard Gal <laughs> I'm sorry uh, can you talk about how you got really good at watercolor and anatomy um, uh, practice <laughs> practice that's it practice just practice um, there's nothing uh, magical about it. <laughs> it's just practice. The more you practice, the better you get. That's that's the thing. Uh, that's for any talent you might want to have. It doesn't really matter what your interests are. If you have a passion for something and you practice it, it it becomes talent. Um, or that's what I, how I define a talent um, is to have a passion an undying passion for something and the will to practice it and yeah that's how I try to get better uh, with things and anatomy I I'm still not good with anatomy especially hands freak me out still like years after years of practicing hands I still don't get the the, the click <laughs> I don't know um, hands are frustrating and noses even more <laughs> I don't know but uh, I won't give up and I, I keep on practicing and maybe one day I will be better with it <laughs> um, the next question comes from Katie K KG could you please talk about your art journey for example why and when you started using watercolors or if you went to art school um, uh, like I said before, I started watercolors in 2013, kind of a time when I started, like a few months before I started my YouTube channel, it's almost five years ago, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I started because I saw at that time I wanted to get back uh, into art uh, because I wasn't doing anything for years um, and 
I just missed it and I wanted to do that again um, and start drawing again and painting and I saw at that time I was like really interested in some artists that used like watercolors and um, yeah like I said I found that effect really interesting uh, so I bought them and I uh, started to paint with them and no I didn't attend any art school um, I wanted to but I never really made it into art school so uh, yeah I don't know I don't think it's necessary um, nowadays I think it's something when you're really interested in art uh, it can help you um, but personally I don't know I don't know what they are uh, teaching you in art school and probably every art school is different so I don't know um, I would love to actually attend art school but um, I also read that a lot of people felt frustrated after it because they were drawing so much but they felt uh, no motivation to draw for, for their own um, or draw something uh, completely different uh, or, or draw in the free time they had because it was uh, too much and I feel like that could probably happen to me <laughs> like when it's too much then I've I, I lose interest in that so I don't know um, or take a pause uh, or, or break uh, f from it um, the next question comes from Ari Arias Arts and I'm reading this in German and um, she's also an amazing artist who uses like all kinds of different mediums and you definitely have to check her out. I will uh, link here in the description. <laughs> um, okay, I'm reading this in German first. Uh, mich, würde es sehr, mich würde sehr interessieren, was deine Inspiration und Motivation ist. Ob es bei einigen Arbeiten vielleicht eine Geschichte gibt oder was die Inspiration zu diesem Bild war. Natürlich hoffe, äh, höre ich dir auch gerne zu, wenn du über Videogames sprichst. Um, so she asked about my inspiration and motivation. I think I answered this like uh, about my inspiration. Like everything is inspirational and motivation is yeah the same thing. It goes kind of hand in hand. Um, and she also asked if my works have a story behind them. Uh, that depends. Sometimes I have something in my mind and a lot of times I just... Uh, it's more like presenting a feeling in colors. <laughs> I don't know how to answer this. Uh, it's more like I am... I would love to have more stories for, for characters that I draw, but... Uh, it's more like a feeling like when I see or when I paint I feel a certain way and I try to put that on paper um, that also happened like a lot with the digital stuff because they are a lot more personal and uh, I don't know it's it's more like a feeling than a story even though I am trying to work on kind of uh, stories but they are also more like feelings that I want to put into kind of stories because I'm not really good in with words. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm trying. I still want to do a comic, which I wanted to do like for years now and I'm still like writing down stuff for it and uh, I don't know if I will ever make this one. <laughs> um, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of it. <laughs> um, the next question is the last question, and it's not art related. It's actually uh, video game related. Uh, can you talk a bit about your favorite character from Detroit Become Human? Did you like Ralph? Um, I think he's my favorite. This comes from Pro Straight uh, on Instagram. I really liked Ralph. Uh, Ralph was the one who kind of got damaged by humans um, I felt so sorry about him <laughs> to be honest so I don't know he needed a hug uh, but I would I wondered uh, or it, I was surprised that it was the only scene or chapter where we uh, where I would see him I thought that there would be more to it uh, like for example they would put him also in the police station and ask him questions um, I don't know, that was kind of weird, but yeah. Um, 
to be honest, at first my favorite character was Marcus, but I, I probably thought that because he was <laughs> living with a painter um, and I really loved that house and all the, the, the little Easter eggs it had and Easter eggs in general, like I had to go around every scene, every chapter and uh, watch everything and read all the articles and they had like so many references to uh, what's happening right now and how the world is going to become in the next uh, 50 years and it was kind of creepy uh, to read all of that because that probably will happen <laughs> um, yeah so at first it was Marcus but then it kind of switched to Connor and Hank kind of or their relationship I really like those two I don't know I know that a lot of people uh, like Connor um, but I think he is the one who makes the most change and you're the one who influences this the most because he can become a really bad character um, which I can't play I can't play bad characters uh, and yeah I, I think second is Akara because she's so badass she's so cool I really liked her her chapters and they freaked me out so much and also the one with um, what was his name? I don't know where they were in the house with all the uh, with all the kind of broken androids with that guy. I forgot his name. Um, but you probably know. <laughs> that was so creepy and that was so uh, different from all the chapters. Like it was like a totally different story. Um, but I really liked it and it was so interesting and. I couldn't play the last chapter <laughs> for a couple of days like I knew that when I was like okay this is the last chapter I need a break <laughs> and I took a break and yeah I don't know it was really interesting and really well made and I was waiting for this game for so long like since the day I saw that uh, the demo clip from Kara I thought that I need this game and it, it became a really really good one and yeah <laughs> it's a really good game have you played it <laughs> and what's your favorite character if you have any ca favorite characters i'm asking all of you um i don't know i really like to i really like to play video games at the moment so um uh, especially yeah like i said because they are so inspiring and um also because when i want to make a comic i wanted to be in sort of a similar world than uh, De Detroit and like a little bit like cyberpunk-ish um, future with androids and stuff like that like I had I have a few ideas that I want to have in them uh, but it will take a while until I can actually start drawing so I'm really bad with storytelling so I don't know I, I always have like a visual in my head like for scenes but Giving them words is very difficult, um, but I also read um, a comic where I think there were no there were no words in it, um, or or just just a little bit. It was more the visual aspect to it. I think what was it called? Ap Apocalyptic girl? Apocalyptic girl? I really liked that one. The design of it and everything. Um, so I thought that maybe when I tell a story I don't need words <laughs> because I'm so bad with it. Um, I don't know. In general, if you have any recommendation for comics or games or movies that kind of play into like a certain way like uh, Detroit uh, or a cyberpunk-ish uh, theme like uh, Blade Runner uh, Altered Carbon, I started to watch this, um, I still need to continue watching this, but I, I really like to watch or play uh, games like that because it's very inspiring and I need more, I need to get more into that comic when I want to do, <laughs> kind of, but um, I kind of like the theme in general, so if you have any recommendations also for comics that kind of uh, go with it. Let me know. I uh, want to check uh, them out. 
Um, like one game I found very very cool and the atmosphere was so uh, so dark um, was Observer. I, I didn't play it to be honest because of the jump scares and I, I don't like to play games with jump scares and there were a lot but I watched like a, a playthrough of it um, and it was so interesting like the, the, the design of the characters and it was really freaky and uh, very very cool and yeah from comics I still have a Descender I still need to read or continue reading Descender which is also a really interesting uh, comic book about uh, a robotic or an android boy um, that was on, and it still is like really interesting also because they use watercolors to uh, paint the comic um, I forgot the name uh, I'm sorry I forgot the name of who actually paints these and of course I'm I'm so hyped and and I'm so looking forward to cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> Like I, I I can't wait to play it, but I know that it will take at least two more years, um, which I am absolutely fine with. Like take your time, CD Projekt Red, <laughs> take your time. I can wait. I was so excited when they announced that they would be doing a game in a kind of a cyberpunkish world, which is also called cyberpunk because I love that genre so much, um, and. It, it's gonna be amazing. I know that. And I don't get the hate that they get <laughs> from some of the people who say, oh, first person perspective. It was so weird, to be honest, like, uh, to see uh, people getting so upset. The only people I feel like sorry about is the ones who actually get motion sickness. Um, I really hope that that won't happen with the game because I feel like they will miss something. Um, to be honest, I read about it before they kind of announced it in an interview uh, that it will be a first-person perspective and I thought, okay, that's absolutely different um, for a role-playing game to me uh, because I'm so used to Witcher and I feel like most of the people who complain are so used to the Witcher that they can't imagine a first-person perspective in a game like that. But um, uh, the thing they said about it and the reasons why they chose to do it, I think I think they make sense. So I am not mad or anything. I'm 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 as hyped as I am before, and I know that they made that choice because of a lot of reasons, and I can't wait to play it. I'm so I'm so hyped. <laughs> I don't know. I would love to go to Gamescom and uh, actually. I feel like there will be a, a playable demo there uh, for everybody, but I think that if I would go to Gamescom, I would freak out because there are, uh, first there are so many people there, and it gets bigger and bigger every year. Um, and second, I would probably stay the whole day in line to actually see something. Um, so I don't know. I wanted to go to Gamescom for so many years, but I don't want to go alone. And yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Um, anyone going to Gamescom, uh, please make a photo for me <laughs> of Cyberpunk because I know they will be there. They are always there um, and it's going to be amazing. Ah, oh, I wish I could go. I don't know. Stupid head. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this game and I'm searching for or I'm trying to get into a new game that I can play. Um, especially in the evenings because I, I finished God of War and it was amazing and I'm kind of missing sort of an open world like game uh, right now I, I need to play something if you have recommendations for games let me know I still ha need to like play Persona 5 or continue I, I kind of stopped because uh, for some time I, I didn't feel like I want to play anything <laughs> Uh, and when I stopped Persona 5 and when uh, suddenly other things, uh, other games came out and I was like, okay, I need to play the new ones first. <laughs> so I still need to play that one. I don't know. What I also do uh, is to play Sims, but not really play it. I just build stuff in it um, and make uh, buildings. <laughs> um, 
I don't really enjoy the gameplay, like, uh, I, and I also don't really like how they make the uh, DLCs, uh, not really DLCs, like the expansion packs for it uh, lately. I, I, I don't really like that. Like, there are so many mods and um, custom content creator for The Sims uh, that do a better job than, than actually. The Sims creators, to be honest, I feel like that, and I'm, I'm I feel sad to say this, but I think uh, The Sims 4 has m less and less content within their expansion packs. Like they take, like I don't mean that uh, the creative team behind uh, Sims 4 is doing a bad job. I feel like more of the people, both from uh, who say you have this and this deadline, you're not. Uh, supposed to make a lot of content uh, <laughs> or make just of the content you can create and we have to p release it on this day like I don't know the deadlines are probably horrible because they put um, or they release so many expansion packs in a year and I won't buy any of them anymore the only one that I was waiting for and excited for was actually uh, pets or uh, cats and dogs for Sims 4, um, but other than that, uh, I don't, I don't really like to play it. I, uh, like I said, I build stuff, and most of the stuff that I'm building with is custom content, which makes it even more interesting. And I actually, um, I actually have a, a second channel, a second YouTube channel, where until now I uh, uploaded only like Sims built um, almost like every week because I re it's so relaxing to just build stuff in Sims. You have no idea. This so, I don't know, just put in a podcast or music and just build stuff and... Um, it's it's I don't know it's like Lego <laughs> uh, to me and uh, yeah I don't know I don't know if you're interested in that but uh, I actually wanted to ma or made this second channel to actually upload let's plays but until now I wasn't really happy with the games that I started to do let's plays I thought that it was always boring uh, when I talk um, so that I, I I I think I uploaded one. Uh, but I made it, uh, but I deleted it <laughs> in the end. But um, for the future, I really want to do Let's Plays and try it because I really enjoy uh, playing video games and I want to play more uh, pixel art games as well. Uh, I really enjoy those because um, I'm also kind of obsessed with pixel art and there are so many amazing pixel art artists and uh games in that genre that are uh, a lot of fun to play. Um, for example, uh, probably a lot of you know, like Thimbleweed Park, which came out, I think, last year. Uh, this one is so cool. It was so f much fun to play. Um, yeah, I really enjoy these games and I want to do more Let's Plays. I don't know if you're actually interested in Let's Plays and stuff like that. But if you have recommendations for Let's Plays, let me know. Or uh, Twitch streamers that you like. Um, I actually just watch a handful of like Let's Plays. I, uh, from Germany, I watch Kronk. Um, I almost watch every stream he does like on Fridays. And if you don't know him... Um, yeah, he's he's kind of the biggest German let's player and not really streamer, biggest streamer, but uh, um, because he streams like just once or twice a week. But uh, I like his personality and it's a lot of fun to watch him play games. Um, so uh, when it comes to American uh, let's plays, I only watch a little bit of uh, Game Grumps, but that's kind of all I think. I d uh, I think I don't have anyone else. Like sometimes I watch a different one depending on the game or the video they make. So I don't know, but I kind of like um, I kind of like to or would like to try and do a let's plays as well because till now uh, I only have like like I said these Sims builds uh, 
on my channel and I thought that uh, trying out Let's Plays would make me more fluent in English. And also, uh, I first I wanted to try it and do this in German. Um, but uh, it's really difficult. Um, and I'm a little bit like a perfectionist also when it comes to things like that. Because when I try to listen to a Let's Plays that I or listen to what I just recorded, I always have the feeling that I sound really, really boring, especially when it comes to Let's Plays, but you have to have a, a certain personality to be interesting, because um, why would you watch a Let's Play, I think? Uh, it's always like 90% the personality of the Let's Player and 10% the game, except for when you just watch playthroughs without commentary. <laughs> I would love to try it and become more fluent and uh, do uh, or play more like indie games, like small games and uh, pixel art games, like I said. And there are a few that I already played and yeah, I would love to try, but I need to have more practice. <laughs> I will probably record a ton more uh, Let's Plays until the day where I finally decide, okay, that's, that's okay. Uh, you can upload this actually. Um, until now I only have like these uh, Sims builds where I don't talk at all. Um, sometimes I talk in the in the tours, in the house tours that I usually do in them. Um, but uh, it's something that I only do for builds that I feel like I need to, to explain things about them. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I don't know if you're actually interested in, uh, in it, but uh, for the first time, maybe I will put the link in the description, but you don't have to follow me there. I understand that uh, not a lot of people are interested in that, so I made this uh, channel for me f to, I don't know, also to be more open to, to other things other than uh, just painting, because I remember how difficult it was when I started this channel um, and to put on like or to upload my first uh, video and I was like oh god it's not good the lighting and um, it's so the, the image is so noisy like in this as well like I still need a new camera I still need to figure out how to put lights in my room because I have I, I actually bought lights or lamps uh, just for recording but nothing really works because I think my camera is uh, giving up uh, and it has days where it kind of works and then there are days where it doesn't really want to work at all and it just shuts down and it's so frustrating and uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I want a camera that can work with with the light that I have and also with um, without having to to press record every 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe in the future I will be able to, to purchase one because I have my eye on a few cameras and they are really expensive. And I know that there are not so expensive um, options as well, but I think that if I want to, then I should go and get one that actually works in the way uh, that I want it to work. <laughs> Um, but that's something for the future. I don't know yet if I will be able to get one. And in the summer is also really, really difficult to record anything or even have my computer on because it gets so hot in my, um, in my apartment. Like, uh, I have a fan here, but that does really work. And, uh all the <laughs> everything is melting in here like all my colors are melting and it gets so hot because uh, I have sunshine of oh, the sun shining into my apartment the whole day so um, yeah it's like uh, a sauna <laughs> I don't know it's uh, it's frustrating and I hope that I can uh, move soon and find an apartment but there are some changes coming in the next next few months so uh, I have to stay here for a little bit longer and um, hopefully next year I can move and everything is like safe and I know where I'm going and stuff like that and that I can move finally 
um, and then I won't be living in Berlin anymore, I guess. Uh, yeah, I know, I don't know, <laughs> I know, I don't know. How many times did I say I don't know? Um, I'm really sorry. I'm still really awkward when I talk, I'm still really like, uh, have no self-esteem. <laughs> I don't know, but it got better uh, within the years, I think. I hope so. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it and it was not too random when I talked about like video games and stuff that kind of interests me recently. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I should actually record like digital drawing when I do that because um, I feel that a lot of you um, are following me because of paintings like these, like you're seeing right now, and not really because of digital drawings, uh, because those are very, very different and weird. Um, and I'm not really sure if anyone would like to see something like that being created, because I'm, I'm not sure if that's something interesting. Okay, so we're at the end of the video. Um, I want to thank you for listening if you stayed that long. I hope that it was uh, not uh, too long or uh, too too short, but it was okay that I sped it up uh, by two times. And yeah, I wish you all a great day and have fun. <laughs> enjoy the heat. I don't enjoy it, I want a pool and I want uh, ice cream. Um, but if you enjoy heat, then go outside and enjoy it. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!